Welcome to Feasting on the Word for July the 20th, 2022. This discipline links us into an ancient Christian practice, more commonly known as Lectio Divina, in which we simply immerse ourselves in the Word of God, in Holy Scripture, that we might listen for God speaking through that Scripture into our lives, and that it may form, reform, challenge, whatever it might be us uh, in our faith journey. In order to accomplish this and not be overwhelmed, what w the practice does is take small passages of scripture and read the, that same passage a series of times so that we have an opportunity to meditate upon that small passage of scripture. So it's likened to feasting on God's word in the sense of hearing that word being like taking a bite of uh, that word, and then hearing it again, savoring its flavor, then hearing it again, beginning to chew on it, if you will, and then hearing it a final time, incorporating it into our lives, swallowing it down. So in our discipline, I use four different translations of the same passage, just as a way to hear that passage differently. We have a minute of silence following the first reading, a minute following the second, a longer period of three minutes following the third reading, intended as an opportunity for us to turn to God in prayer, having heard that scripture three times. And then we conclude the discipline with a fourth and final reading. Sometimes it's helpful to have something to write with and something to write on nearby. So as you hear the scripture through those first three times, you can write down your impressions. And then when it comes to the longer period of silence, when we are invited to be in prayer, you can take those reflections and use them as the source or basis for that prayer. So let's get into the discipline now of feasting on God's word. Our passage this week comes from Colossians. This is the first chapter, verses 9 through 18, beginning with the New Revised Standard Version. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, so that you may have all endurance and patience, joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead so that he might come to have first place in everything. Our second reading of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 9 through 18, from the Message Translation. Be assured that from the first day we heard of you, we haven't stopped praying for you, asking God to give you wise minds and spirits attuned to his will, and so acquire a thorough understanding of the ways in which God works. 
We pray that you'll live well for the Master, making him proud of you as you work hard in his orchard. As you learn more and more how God works, you will learn how to do your work. We pray that you'll have the strength to stick it out over the long haul, not the grim strength of gritting your teeth, but the glory strength God gives. It is strength that endures the endurable and spills over into joy, thanking the Father who makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. God rescued us from dead-end alleys and dark dungeons. He set us up in the kingdom of the Son, He loves so much the son who got us out of the pit we are in, got rid of the sins we were doomed to repeating. We look at his son and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this son and see God's original purpose in everything created. For everything, absolute everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does the body. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade. He is supreme in the end. From the beginning to the end, he's there towering far above everything, everyone. So spacious he sees, so expansive that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Our third reading of Colossians chapter 1 verses 9 through 18 from the contemporary English version and this will be followed by our longer period of silence. We have not stopped praying for you since the first day we heard about you. In fact, we always pray that God will show you everything he wants you to do and that you may have all the wisdom and understanding his spirit gives. Then you will live a life that honors the Lord and you will always please him by doing good deeds. You will come to know God even better. His glorious power will make you patient and strong enough to endure anything, and you will be truly happy. I pray that you will be grateful to God for letting you have a part in what he has promised his people in the kingdom of light. God rescued us from the dark power of Satan and brought us into the kingdom of his dear son who forgives our sins and sets us free. Christ is exactly like God who cannot be seen. He is the firstborn son, superior to all creation. Everything was created by him, everything in heaven and on earth, everything seen and unseen, including all forces and powers and all rulers and authorities. All things were created by God's son and everything was made for him. God's son was before all else and by him everything is held together. He is the head of the body. He is the head of his body, which is the church. He is the very beginning the first to be raised from death, so that he would be above all others.
Our fourth and final reading of Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 18, the New International Version. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 